We saw last year some of the glitches that Honda were having off the line after the cars have been heat soaking on the grid for a while and the Red Bull cars are at the front of the grid so they heat soak for more time. They've obviously done work over that uh, on that over the winter. The packaging is still very tight on the Red Bull compared with say the, the Alfa Tori and we saw the engine go into default switch off mode with Sergio Perez on the uh, formation lap. But what we're hearing is that they've spent a lot of time trying to keep things a bit cooler and they had a new, they've got new internals as well in that area, but equally they had a new dry ice protocol on the grid, which actually overdid it. And there was condensation in the electrics around the battery area. And that's what caused the short. The interesting thing is, I'm interested to get your, your take on this. The interesting thing is they managed to sort it and get the thing going again. And I, my theory is that when he stopped, actually there was a tremendous amount of heat at that moment and that probably got rid of the condensation. So magically they were able to get the thing fired up again. Do you think it was as simple and as basic as that? Um, and yeah, it, that seems to hold <laughs> hold a lot of water. That's probably not the best term to use in that situation. But yeah, I mean, that, that seems you know completely plausible. Um, and I think there's a couple of things that you know, were kind of highlighted from that is that, you know, Sergio Perez's you know, presence of mind, you know, in a car that he's never raced before, cut out on your first formation lap. And I'm not quite sure the status of his radio. We could hear the team radio, but not necessarily Sergio's. Um, and reset the car and use the uh, hybrid systems to start the car and start the race. Um, so both Sergio, you know, the Red Bull team and Honda all working together to mitigate, you know, when these things happen. And that's, you know, that's when you win, you know, championships, isn't it? Is when that you, you know, you're trying to prevent any issues uh, cropping up. And, you know, they'll learn from that and they'll, they'll move forwards to the next race and obviously change things around over such a little bit. But um, I think that the key thing really um, beyond that is how much work Honda have done over the winter, which is absolutely incredible. And there's already been, surprisingly, given the secrecy in Formula One, uh, a documentary in Japan uh, with Honda being very open with internals and parts of their car, um, talking about the development they've done over the winter already. And they really have kind of shrunk the engine within the, the, the envelope that the FIA allow you to put in there created more power, managed the cooling and recovered from the technical directive that hurt them so much last year. So, you know, Honda really are trying to go out with a bang, which we've seen so often in their time in Formula One. I think one of their last qualifying engines of the uh, the, the V10 era, you know, was like a thousand horsepower just with a normally aspirated engine, which was incredible. So, yeah, I think Honda really are working very hard and already... You know, we know that Red Bull and well, Red Bull uh, powertrains, I think they're calling it, um, are ramping up their side of things to take on the Honda project at the end of this year to move um, forwards um, under the new regulations, uh, as with it being badged, uh, I presume, a, a Red Bull uh, engine. So, yeah, I mean, I think uh, all credit to them. You make another good point there, though, Scarves, which is that they did have the ability to restart the car. But, of course, Formula One cars do not have to have self-starters by the regulations and we're, we're assuming and we think we we know for a fact that not all the cars on the grid actually have that ability right well i think ferrari and certainly renault have, have been seen many times to be able to restart their cars and uh, the real people missing from this were mercedes and they said i think it was actually you who told me that they just haven't configured the setup to be able to start the car with the mg uk uh, however, at the end of last year, um, they made some developments that allowed them to do so. And we actually did see evidence of the Mercedes self-starting for the first time. Uh, so that's the first time since the 2014 regulations came in and these engines suddenly had, you know, a big uh, 160 horsepower starter motor strapped to them. So I think now all of the teams are in a position to, to, to do this which um, is strange that it's not regulated because it seems such a, a straightforward thing to, to force them to do. And, you know, if a car is stuck out on track and it's stalled, the best thing in the world is for that car to be able to fire itself up and move out of danger. So, you know, I think that should be considered as part of the regulations going forwards. I agree. I couldn't agree more. I've been banging on about that. We both have for quite a long time, even before the hybrid regs came in. Final point, Scarbs. Going back to the Portuguese Grand Prix year, uh, last year when Pierre Gasly had an enormous fire on the Alfa Tori, which was um, battery related, an issue with a, a fuse, something went wrong in the 
in a short near the battery. My question at the time was why he didn't use the onboard extinguisher before he got out of the car. But we're now learning that he did. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I'm not aware of any changes forthcoming to um, you know, the electrical installation or the extinguisher. But as you say, the extinguisher is there to run for about, I think, 10 seconds. Um, and that was, you say, discharge into the cockpit, but also into the engine bay. And the, the, the extinguisher has always been, from an engine bay point of view, is to extinguish fuel fires, which, uh, you know, while still can happen, um, and, you know, we have seen airbox fires and, you know, um, things similar to that. But in terms of where the, um, the battery and the high voltage electrics are, um, they are you know, in an area well away from that. In fact, they're well protected from the engine for, for obvious reasons. And while safety is an absolute critical factor in you know, all these high voltage electrical systems, there isn't necessarily uh, an extinguisher for an external fire in that area. Um, obviously the battery itself does have um, fire protection uh, strategies uh, built into it and the marshals are, are ready to you know, deal with uh, battery fires should that happen but if the other parts of the electric high voltage electrics which tend to sit in the side pods do catch fire there isn't necessarily anything there to uh, prevent that so again for all the good work that the, the FIA safety department do I think that maybe does need to be one that needs to be um, something that they um, think about particularly with new engine regulations potentially coming uh, in a handful of years. Up, 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 up. Good, come on. Push, push, push. Good, and back. Push, 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 push. Two more. Push, push, push. Come on, Sergio. Up, 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 up. Last reps. It's come. not my favorite, but it's it's one I enjoy. Um, unfortunately, racing the the race is not so interesting for the fans if it's a normal race um, without the safety cars. So on, it can it can end up being a, a one stop race, uh, boring for the fans. But um, uh, yeah, hopefully we we are there in the mix from from day on from the day one onwards and and hopefully we we take another step uh, in the right direction for me at the moment it's just very important that I, that I get on top of the car that I really feel comfortable right now I'm just having to think a lot what's going on with the car and um, but we are making progress and uh, I just hope that uh, I just make it soon soon enough the the progress because uh, right now we have a very competitive car and and yeah, uh, have to be there uh, pretty soon.